Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today I have Paul Rivera on the line, and he's founder and CEO of Def Logics. Paul, welcome to the show. Thank you, Adam. All right, Paul. So uh, excited to get into today's topic. So a lot of entrepreneurs, executives, uh, business owners watch this show, and they're always looking for tips and strategies and and things that are going to help them in their businesses. And uh, cybersecurity is a big deal, relevant issue, and uh, lots of updates we'll be talking about regarding uh, Def Logics and really the plans going forward and what people should be thinking about. Um, and to kick this episode off, we'll start with our Mission Matters Minute. So, Paul, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's our mission. Paul, what mission matters to you? Well, my mission or our mission uh, really is to provide, you know, services and products to our customers. And and for me, is basically doing our best uh, Mm -hmm. to provide those services uh, to our customers. One of the things that, you know, I saw a lot of uh, early on in, in my career yeah. was uh, basically um, sometimes I saw that, you know, you know, things weren't being done as, as uh, well as it could be. And so that's one of the things that, you know, really, really matters to us is, is yeah. providing excellent work to our customers. Fantastic. Love bringing uh, mission-based entrepreneurs and executives on the line to really share, you know, where their heart's at, why they do what they do and how they're making a difference in the marketplace and in the world. So, so great to have you on. And uh, maybe before we get into Def Logics and, and the overall topic, which is how we secure our digital assets, let's start a little bit more with who, who Paul is. So tell us a little bit more about your background and really how you got started in cybersecurity. Okay. Let's see how far back you want to go. <laughs> When, when, was it picking Thanks up the computer? Were you one of those computer guys that were taking them apart, putting them back together? Like, like where'd this fascination <laughs> come from? <laughs> yeah, so I always liked science when I, when I was a kid. One of my dreams was to be an astronaut, right? Mm-hmm. And so I learned a lot about, you know, astronomy when I was younger. And uh, however, I was a really bad student. Um, <laughs> I got left back in second grade mm-hmm. and I quit school when I was 15 years old. Wow. But uh during the during that time, uh, especially when I, when I quit school, I ended up uh, just going to the library all the time, wow. and and so I started picking like a uh, subject matter that was kind of interesting to me, mm-hmm. and when I did that, it just kind of led led me into different things like uh, like sci fi, you know, um, yeah. I, I read a lot of sci fi books, and and then I would you know like I wonder how that would work, and and so mm-hmm. then I'd look into physics, right, and then I'd read about physics. And I'm like, oh, wow, how did they figure all this stuff? And then I'd learn a little bit about math, you know, and and uh, and it just led me into different areas because uh, I was interested in this one little subject matter. Hmm. Flash forward, uh, I guess, in my mid-20s mm-hmm. um, or early early 20s, I, I decided to uh, go back to college or go to college. And then I was, I was going to be a philosophy and history major. <laughs> and uh, yeah. <laughs> And then, uh, but, it, you know, again, I, I was tinkered with stuff. I, I would take little electronic things apart and, you know, uh, put them back together. And then uh, eventually I took a, a, a philosophy course in logic. And then so I said, well, let me take a, a computer science course. That's an application of logic. And so when I did that, that's when I'm like, wow, this is really cool. I love wow. programming. And then that's how I got into, the, into computer science. Wow. Um, that's uh... That's interesting to me because I feel like you had your own, you had your own self-education, really. Like you took your own coursework, you did your own thing. Yeah. 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 And it was really, I think, at least for my, me personally, it was more, you know, what, what I was interested in. And when I, when I'm interested in something, I really dive really deep into it and uh, I go down rabbit holes. (laughs) 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 Sometimes I go down rabbit holes, but, but, um, but when, you know, I feel like, uh, you know, that's kind of like my learning style, I guess. Yeah. Um, and then eventually, once I graduated from college, I stumbled into a job uh, doing cybersecurity uh, software development on intrusion detection systems. Mm. 
and network intrusion detection systems. Um, and then that's when I start get into cybersecurity. So, um, and then from there, you know, did different various aspects yeah. of software development and cybersecurity research, mm -hmm. which then eventually I ended up uh, starting a company. So I, I don't want to skip too far ahead in this because I want I, we will one hundred percent talk about your about the boot camp and everything that you that you're that you're doing to help others get into the cybersecurity field. Mm -hmm. But just on the more basic level, like mm -hmm. what kind of things would you tell for you know some individuals that might be watching this that have a natural curiosity that want to kind of pique their interest in in that cybersecurity um, direction? Like what kind of things would you tell them? Well, I mean, there's a lot of open, you know, open source online uh, mm -hmm. uh, areas where they can kind of do self-learning. I think uh, there's actually also a lot of groups um, that you can join and learn a little bit mm -hmm. about uh, cybersecurity. One of the things that we've been doing, actually, I don't know if you want to talk about the boot camp already. Or not, no, but... go for it. Go for it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so we uh, developed a boot camp in order to get people into uh, mm -hmm. cybersecurity, uh, the cybersecurity career field. And um, yeah. yeah, so that's one way boot camps. There's a lot, also a lot, a lot of certifications and, mm -hmm. and whatnot. Now, now certifications, I mean, they're, they're good, but if you're not really applying what you're learning, it's not mm -hmm. going to stick. Right. So I guess if I was starting out right now, with no with no background in cyber, mm -hmm. um, I probably would start off with some type of a boot camp or or self study to get get a little bit familiar with the field, mm -hmm. see where my interest lies because there's a lot of uh, ap there's a lot of career paths you can take in cybersecurity mm -hmm. and see which which one interests me most and then and then just pursue that. Yeah, I um I, I just I'm fascinated by the field, not because I'm any good at it. And my my team over here, when it comes to the IT side of things, or otherwise they already know I'm I'm terrible. But I like doing it. I like talking about it. So it's fun yeah. there. But um, so going further into today's topic, so securing digital assets. Um, mm -hmm. as I mentioned earlier, a lot of executives watch this show. They're looking for tools. They're looking for even just a, a way to think about you know something from a different angle and approach a problem differently. Mm -hmm. Um, what kind of things should we be thinking about when it comes to just securing our digital assets in general? It's basically, I would say, um, the key thing, s some of the key things are, um, you know, making sure that your uh, your employees and your IT staff is, uh, or, uh, is well educated on the subject matter. Some of the things that a lot of breaches occur, they're, they're really two main, two main reasons. I, I, I feel in my experience is really lack of education for uh, or knowledge or, or uh, understanding of what, um, how, how um, you can be compromised. And that goes from, you know, the, the CEO down to the, you know, person working at the front desk to your IT professionals, not being aware of certain things or certain um, basic security precautions you can take. Yeah mitigates uh well if you know enough if you know the right things it mitigates quite a bit of um the the threats out there mm -hmm. um the second one i would say te your technology right a lot of the technology out there right now is um, i think it's it's progressed quite a bit yeah but the main thing i i feel um is that a lot of times um the it staff doesn't leverage their technology to to the fullest, right? So, mm -hmm. for example, they might not configure, you know, a firewall properly, or 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 they may not configure settings in in their their uh, host machines. Mm -hmm. You know, you might have you have to have logging and auditing available. So when you do get breached, you can know what happened, how far, how you know, how much damage is on the network, and yeah. uh, cover quickly. You know, backups. You know, those are those are pretty straightforward things to do. No. So taking it um, maybe one step further, I always I always find that like cybersecurity is like you don't know what you don't know. Right. And, that, yeah. and that's and, and until something happens or until something, then you're always like, ah, come on, I didn't think this. And then and then in retrospect, everything seems like, oh, that could have went a lot differently if I would have done some of these key things. Mm 
Yeah. So just taking it one step further for those that, you know, this isn't that this might be the only cybersecurity interview they've watched all year, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Let's take it a step further. So um, now we got their attention. Like what, what else should they be doing? Uh, basics. I would say two fa- two factor authentication is mm. real basic uh, and widespread capability mm. now in, in most uh, IT infrastructure. Uh, yeah. Email, banking, everything. Um, mm. That that mitigates quite a bit. Um, I would say also um, perhaps I would say educating you know your employees mm. on some of the simple uh, simple things that they can do to prevent. Yeah. Compromise. Like, for example, you know, not clicking on phishing attacks, you know, not clicking yeah. on links that you don't know where they're, they're coming from. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe even verifying, you know, who's emailing, who's emailing you, you know, mm-hmm. calling them up and saying, you know, finding out, you know, is this legit? Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, th- those are really basic things. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I had one time. I, uh, a couple of uh, new employees were coming in mm-hmm. and uh, they're getting texts from uh, so supposedly me asking for a, <laughs> a game card, you know, Hey, can you, can you put 50 bucks in? And, wow. Yeah. And you know, um, a few people almost fell for it. Uh, oh, come so on. I actually had one <laughs> fall for it. And, um, and so then, you know, we, we, uh, we made sure that, hey, the CEO mm-hmm. will never ask you for 50 bucks on a game card or 100 bucks yeah. on a game card, you know, <laughs> so do yeah. not respond to these uh, these texts or emails. So, No, I, I totally get it. And these yeah. things happen. So I, I laugh, but, you know, it does happen and it's unfortunate yeah. that it does. But um, let's uh, let's switch gears a bit. So I yeah. want to go further into Def Logic. Uh, so first, maybe tell us a little bit more about the company overall. Okay. Yeah. Um, it, I started in 2008. Um, uh, I, I didn't really get what a year to start a, co- a tech company. Come I know. On. That's a good, I let's know. not glance over that. You started in 2008. I love this yeah. because every time I see someone that started in 2008, all we ever hear about is the bad. I'm not saying it was easy, right? But you're still here. You're still standing. Yeah. Started in 2008. All right. T- yeah. Tell us more. I just had to bring that up. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, uh, so, so yeah, I was, um, uh, around 2008, you know, mm-hmm. I, I was at a point where I was like, you know what? Um, yeah. I, I've been in this career for a while. Uh, I've, I've seen, you know, all aspects, even the mm-hmm. business side of it, you know. Uh, yeah. And most of the work that I, I, I did previously was really government government contracting and, and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So um, and I, I when I think back on it, I think I was kind of crazy and I had delusions of grandeur <laughs> and I just did it right. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> I was even I was even in debt when I, I was in bad debt. So launched the company, and then I we landed uh, well, we landed a, a contract in two thousand nine, and then from there, you know, it was really me. Um, mm-hmm. And then I had hired one one person. Yeah, and then little by little, you know, the next year, you know, hired a little bit more and a little yeah. bit more, and then then we had a big break in like I say twenty eleven, mm-hmm. where um. We, we had a, a partner who couldn't staff uh, mm. work and, you know, I ended up hiring like seven or eight people. Yeah. And from there, we just been steadily growing. Today, we're about uh, 70 employees now. Wow. So, um, but, you know, uh, it's funny how um, your initial ideas mm-hmm. or initial delusion of grandeur <laughs> <laughs> evolves as your, you know, uh, as, as, uh, your business evolves. Right. So yeah, when I first started, um, I was really specializing in, in network intrusion detection. Mm-hmm. And, and, uh, as you know, as, uh, you know, where, um, the bad guys were going and, and focusing in on, uh, you know, ways of getting in, mm-hmm. then we started going to host integrity, you know, uh, research, uh, and then we started doing other, other things, machine learning, um, uh, insider threat detection, mm. mitigation. And so mm. it's crazy. Cause like, you know, initially it was just this one thing. And then now we're into all kinds of different technologies and, and, and cybersecurity subject areas. 
Man, just a, uh, just a quick sidebar here to, to talk to the entrepreneurs out there for a moment. We're recording this for context because people will be watching this for years um, to come. Um, we're recording this in you know 2021, the end. Um, we're in December. You can see that little Christmas tree in the back. I love it. I need a Christmas tree in the background of mine as well. Um, I'm in. But, you know, some people right now, they're going through some time. Some people are launching yeah. businesses. Some people, unfortunately, you know, maybe they're on to their next business or, you know, the pandemic, all these things mm-hmm. may have kind of disrupted them a little bit. So mm-hmm. you, I mean, 2008, we're talking the housing crisis. That'd be yeah. the last, like, big, big major thing that happened in the U.S. that shook the world, really. Yeah. Um, like, what kind of things would you tell people um, that are that are kind of going through it right now? Uh, I'd say, you know, just don't give up, right? Kind of persevere through it. Uh, I think that's one of the key things I notice about people who start businesses and entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. They just don't quit. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, and, and then always, you know, adapt and learn. Um, and then, you know, sometimes you think something, um, a bad, you know, a bad thing. And then it actually, sometimes it ends up being better in the long run because, (laughs) You explore other things that you would not have explored if it had not happened to you, right? So, yeah. Uh, and that's one of the things that I've learned quite a bit in my journey as an entrepreneur um, mm-hmm. is that, uh, you know, you, you might have some setbacks, but sometimes these setbacks mm-hmm. make you um, a lot better, makes your business a lot better and more resi- resilient. Um, and actually, it's actually a catalyst for growth. So, man, uh, so true, so true, and well said. All right, I want to get into some of the products, so some of the day to day nuts and bolts of what you're doing over at Def Logic. So, maybe mm-hmm. let's start with the security gap manager. So, tell us a little bit more about that. Okay. Well, um, I could kind of talk about, uh, yeah. So, with the security gap manager, uh, again, going back in, uh, I'd say in 2012, we had run this. Uh, mm-hmm some work from Department of Homeland Security. Yeah. And it was for host integrity uh, type of uh, research. And mm-hmm. the program um, basically was geared to, you know, do research, build mm-hmm. uh, a product, and then create a commercial product out of it. Uh, and it was a pretty good program. And so then uh, we developed some technology that basically, uh, you know, secured the host. Um, mm-hmm. It was called Entrap. And this other one called Shimix, which is a a bio ba- a BIOS or UEFI based mm-hmm. security technology, and um, and so as we tried to commercialize, and that was a big learning curve too. The commercialization, mm-hmm. um, there's a lot of a lot of uh, things <laughs> that go into it. Uh, transitioning this research research technology into a, you know something that's uh, viable that people mm-hmm. will buy. So there's a lot of uh, uh, learning uh, experiences doing that. And um, as so as time went on, because cybersecurity changes so quickly. Yeah. As soon as you, it's a lot of times, as soon as you develop a, uh, a solution, mm-hmm. six to 12 months later, it's obsolete, right? Mm-hmm. So it's not like you're one and done. <laughs> uh, you know, you built your silver, you have your silver bullets. Yeah. And, you're, you're good to go. It's, it's not like that, especially in this field. It's so fast moving. Mm-hmm. So, uh, over time, uh, as we start growing, it kind of distracted us from, uh, doing a lot of the commercial work to get yeah. the products, uh, going. And so then about a year, a year or two later, we, we start looking at, um, Hey, let's, let's d- dust this technology off and <laughs> see what we can do with it. Um, and trap. Mm-hmm. So we did the analysis and we're like, Oof, you know, uh, I don't know if, um, uh, you know, this would be, uh, there's a lot of other vendors who have similar technology now. Mm-hmm. So, you know, now we're in more, a more crowded space. Um, so then, <laughs> so then as we did more research, we started learning more about like windows and what mm-hmm. they put in there. And so we got to the point where, um, we said, uh, how about we just leverage what Microsoft already put into mm-hmm. their operating system? So we looked at that and, uh, and so we started looking at, uh, best practices, uh, and we, we, and mm-hmm. we have a lot of experience, uh, securing systems for, cause a lot of the work we do is with, uh, yeah. Department of defense. And so we looked at, um, what would be a midway point between, let's say a department of defense computer system and mm-hmm. 
what would be necessary for a business to still have um, uh, enough security on their on their system without impacting the productivity yeah. of the business. So then we we uh, experimented and and we saw like uh, we found like a balance of security mm-hmm. and productivity, and uh, and we made that kind of our our our, um, our standard. So then mm-hmm. with the security gap manager. We, we basically said, okay, what we'll do is um, we can uh, analyze your system, yeah. see, see how it measures up to the standard that we've developed that we, we, we uh, you know, feel that is, it's mm-hmm. a, a fine balance of um, security and, and productivity, mm-hmm. and then give a rating, a ranking, you know, to see where you're at, business or individual, and yeah. basically apply these um, safeguards that, that you know, the, your operating, your operating mm-hmm. system has. And, uh, and that's kind of like where the idea was born. So we look at the gap between what our standard is and what you currently have in your, on your machine. And then you have the option of like, you know, bring it up to the standard, um, that we've, we've uh, developed and then maintaining that standard. Mm-hmm. And then, um, so that, that's the security gap analyzer. And then, uh, the manager actually manages it. So when, when COVID hit, and we're like, we're like, okay, well, everybody's out working yeah. at home and whatnot. So like, let's, let's, um, develop it to where, um, you know, a, a small business or medium sized business can mm-hmm. monitor the remote worker security posture. So that way, um, their mm-hmm. systems are not compromising the, the it infrastructure of the business. So, yeah. And, and that's a big deal, especially yeah. with everybody, especially with everybody working remote, because that happens so fast and like the yeah. shift was so fast and some people are going back to work. Some aren't some, some have, you know, created some of these positions that are permanently going to be remote. And now mm-hmm. I feel like there's been, and some, you know, different companies are at different parts of their journey, let's say with cybersecurity, yeah. but maybe some are like in the very, very, they're going to watch this. And this is like, yeah, we, we didn't really think that part of it out because we just had to keep the doors open. Right. Have right. Yeah. So yeah. The, what you're doing for your clients, of course. So, so I get it. This makes yeah. sense. And that's another reason why just cybersecurity in general is just, in my opinion, more pressing than ever with, mm-hmm. with these, uh, with these, with the network effect of people being in so many different places now. Yeah. 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 And, I, um, you know, and then, you know, you have potentially people working, uh, overseas, you mm-hmm. know, or traveling and they may be using, uh, uh, insecure networks, you know, yeah. um, and that can open up uh, a business for a compromise mm-hmm. also. So, so I know you mentioned that you work with, you know, you've worked with, you know, large government agencies. Um, do, do you also work with, um, so, so businesses, um, is a small business, mid-sized business, like give us a little bit of a feel for, you know, what, what types of, um, industries or companies typically get the most value out of working with you and your team? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we work with, uh, several small and medium-sized businesses. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the services we've provided has been, uh, you know, risk analysis, mm-hmm. vulnerability analysis. Um, uh, for example, we had one cl- client where um, they were kind of a global company mm-hmm. and we had to um, basically look at all their vulnerability mm-hmm. scans and then um, help prioritize vulnerabilities that were detected to, mm-hmm. you know, mitigate and put and apply safeguards and get, and gave recommendations on how to uh, approach Mm. Uh, safeguarding against some of these uh, vulnerabilities that they have. So uh, that was a, uh, and it was quite a bit of machines. And so we, yeah. we ended up, uh, they would give us this, the raw scans and data. So what we ended up doing is automating it. Uh, Cause our, our, in our company we have, um, it's really a software development shop mm. a focus on cybersecurity research and development and product development. Yeah. And so uh, we ended up just automating automating a lot of the uh work and so mm. uh what would take two or three days to kind of look at these reports we yeah. ended up uh writing a tool that would do it in you know 10 minutes so, wow yeah so and um, it sounds so it sounds like the theme also so you've mentioned a couple of different things it seems like you're always trying to innovate always trying to make things easier a, a more friendly experience for your for your clients mm-hmm. um, for their user journey just understanding right that they're not cybersecurity experts that's what you're being hired for mm-hmm. but they still need the data they still need to be able to make decisions they still need to be able to operate right yeah 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even, even us as a cybersecurity company, I mean, mm-hmm. it's, it's sometimes it, it's, well, it can be tough to, um, keeping up with these, these standards mm-hmm. that, you know, that are being, um, proposed, mm-hmm. uh, for example, a lot of government contractors have to, um, comply with some new standards, um, mm-hmm. And, and, you know, in our journey of complying with that, we were like, oh, wow, okay, there was, we're a cybersecurity company and, you know, there's a lot of things that we have to, we have to get done. Um, yeah. And so um, it's just, it, it, it is a tough, um, it could be a tough, it can be a tough area. Um, yeah. It's just, you know, getting the right, um, you know, having the right knowledge and expertise to kind of put everything together and, and, mm-hmm. you know, secure, secure your data and your network. So. All right. So, uh, so changing focus slightly. So mm-hmm. you mentioned it a little bit or in the beginning of the interview about this boot camp. So um, one of the things that just, you know, as we've been talking, I mean, more people are working remote, um, more yeah. people are working international, more people are working in many different places like cybersecurity risks are, they'll be going up, right? People are going right. to be in different areas. Um, and the education piece just for internal employees is one thing, but for somebody that's looking to get into the industry, I've had a lot of conversations with people in cybersecurity just in general. Um, and I, you're the first that I've met with that, that's, that took that step to create a boot camp to help yeah. others get in the industry as well. So I think it's pretty innovative personally. Um, so like, how'd that come about? How'd the boot camp um, idea come about? Like, tell us more about it. And it came out of frustration. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, a good one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, um, we, we, we landed some work where we had to, uh, yeah. provide, uh, a, a lot of uh, cybersecurity professionals and, mm. uh, uh, more service-based, uh, not, not software development. And so, um, and so when we were interviewing, um, mm-hmm. we noticed there wasn't, there wasn't that many and, and, and the, uh, candidates, a lot of the candidates had very little mm. I guess, experience yeah. sometimes, you know, they were in the right place, right time. But, and then when we, we, uh, interview them, we look for tech, some certain types of technical aptitude. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, we didn't see it and, but, but they were demanding extremely high salaries. Okay. And I was like, I'm like, really, you want to get paid that much? And, can't do some of these things that, you know, we, you know, we, we need uh, Mm -hmm. to have. And, and so, um, but it was consistent, you know, Um, Mm -hmm. and it was really, I, I, it's a supply issue, right? Um, There's not enough people with um, the uh, know-how cybersecurity. So, Mm -hmm. you know, anyone who has just a little bit of experience can, can demand high, high uh, salaries because there's just not enough, enough of them. Got it. So, um, you know, there, there's a trend in the industry where they're trying to automate a lot of that also like that mm-hmm. cybersecurity analysis, but still, you know, um, there's just not enough, um, people in the field. Mm-hmm. So out of frustration, I'm like, you know what, let's, let's, um, let's, you know, provide a boot camp, yeah, and, um, train people and, uh, and then, and then, also train them in, uh, in a ways that we would probably want to see for, you know, yeah. for our company <laughs> and for <laughs> other companies that are in our similar uh, field uh, or similar, mm-hmm. uh, uh, I guess, you know, playground yeah. and, and, you know, and get people in and then, you know, uh, give them an opportunity to get into the field. Um, so that's where, you know, it was started. Right. And so the idea I, we had the idea for, or uh, I'd say about a year or two, three mm-hmm. years maybe. And so I was talking to um, uh, a trainer that I've known for many years. Uh, mm-hmm. When I first started, uh, we worked together at this one company uh, back in the day. It was called Trident Data Systems. Yeah. <laughs> and so he was a trainer there. And so we, you know, we kind of bumped into each other uh, over the years. And then I kind of talked to him about, you know, like, you know, I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to have to start a, a training, some kind of training for this. And and yeah. so it's like, Hey, you know, I, I would wanted to do something like this. Mm-hmm. Uh, can I help you out? And I'm like, okay. 
Um, and so I, I kind of gave him a little bit of the idea. And then the next day, boom, he had a business plan. <laughs> Uh, multiple i was like man you must have been thinking about this for a while you know yeah so then you know i think that kind of the stars aligned and mm-hmm. so uh or rob uh his name's rob dotson mm-hmm. and so uh you know rob and i we start talking about it and he has like so much experience in mm-hmm. uh, training in this field um over 20 years and so i was like yeah oh, it's perfect to help stand this th- stand this up for us mm-hmm. so um he joined, you know, joined the team and kind of was, uh, you know, help, help get this, this, uh, mm-hmm. bootcamp off the ground. And so we started, uh, we started in November mm-hmm. and now we have, uh, I think we have two, you no, know, we have about four, four, uh, more cohorts Wow. Uh, in the, in the second, uh, basically in the first quarter of 2022 there, you know, we're, we're going to, uh, what an amazing story. And I love uh, my favorite entrepreneurial stories are the ones where like, man, I was frustrated. So I have to, I had to fix it. That's like the two F's, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was frustrated and I had to fix it. I just had to yeah. do something about it. And I'm like, Oh man, I, I love when entrepreneurs do that. Cause that, I mean, it's something just happens usually good sometimes in the market. So for example, like you're expanding yeah. the market right now, you're bringing mm-hmm. in new talent. You've mm-hmm. had, you know, blessings in your life and now you're being a blessing as well. Well, and you're roping in your buddies, getting them involved. Come on, we got to start this thing. So solving yeah. problems, it's great. It's a great. Yeah, yeah. And then you know, and then and then that kind of, in a way, it's kind of in line with. Yeah. Because I, I really feel like um, maybe sometimes college can be overkill in some mm-hmm. in, in some professions. Totally. Um, and so, and I think the cybersecurity field, um, there's a lot of opportunity uh, there, mm-hmm. uh, where uh, learning the basic skills can launch you into a, you know, a, a really good career field with, with lots of different uh, career paths and opportunities. Yeah. Uh, it's a very, it's really high in demand. And so I think, um, you know, the boot camp um, mm-hmm. is a, uh, you know, great opportunity for people who are not, who are non-traditional yeah. types of learners or students mm-hmm. uh, to, you know, basically a really cool career path. So. How long is the boot camp? Like, tell me a little bit more about just the expectation, like that that kind of thing. Like, how long it is, what people can expect. Yeah. So, um, we had two we had two boot camp lengths, right? So, mm-hmm. one was the full time one, which was uh, the three month, right? Yeah. And that would be eight hours a day, mm-hmm. uh, five days a week. So we didn't. We saw that. Um, there wasn't as much interest in that one. We did yeah. have interest in that. And then, uh, and then also we have a six month, um, mm. and six month, uh, one is basically night. You go to, you can still have a day job yeah. and, and go to night and go train at night. Um, mm. so that's, that's the one where we saw we have the most, um, interest in. So, um, yeah, and we have, we, we have both available. But um, right now, at least in, uh, for this first cohort, we we started with the six month uh, night school uh, boot camp. It's awesome. It's awesome. Six months later, especially for the person like you said, like this might not take you know years of, and it may not you might not need all these other things you have to do sometimes in college and just right. in general. It's like if you want to, if you know this interests you, if it's something that you maybe you have a passion for and you want to look also for opportunities and you're looking for like just do it. Like you don't yeah. have to you don't have to wait and all that and spend all this time. Like I, I a lot of people, and I'm glad this came up by the way. So a lot of people that may not you know we've been fed to go to college and a lot of these things for a long time and not saying i'm against college i will get emails we'll get all kinds of stuff okay great i said that not against it but in the same sense it's like you know people are paying you know like debt and other things college is a product like at the end of the day college is a product vocational school it's a product like there's different Mm -hmm. paths and for us to kind of as business owners so now i'm talking to you as a business owner for us to as a business owner to say that maybe they need that college or this or that if you don't if you don't and you really could maybe get more value out of somebody else that is more specialized in what you actually need i mean all the better yeah um, so I, I love there being options there and you're providing options to the market so i think it's great mm-hmm. yeah and so uh some of the things that we're also doing on top of that is mm-hmm. um you know so we have the foundational course, right? And yeah. the foundational course really gives you that that um, that foundation to actually start a, a career in cybersecurity. And two other two other things that we're developing 
mm-hmm. for 2022 are some more advanced courses, uh, one for, uh, uh, I guess, offensive or, or red team, you know, understanding how an attacker gets into the network and building those types of skills mm-hmm. and, uh, and blue team. So we have like two more advanced uh, uh, coursework that we're developing mm-hmm. for those more ed- um, for those uh, who want to um, come up, become more s- subject subject matter experts in that particular yeah. area. So um, those are those are kind of the mm-hmm. ones that we're, uh, you know, uh, looking forward to because it's it's uh, it's we'll be able to really focus in on some really cool techniques and tactics mm-hmm. that you know whether a red team or a blue team uh operators use in, in mm-hmm. securing networks or attacking networks right when i say attack and we're not trying to build hackers but but yeah. the uh, operators who can actually uh mm-hmm. understand how the attacker mindset in order to improve the defense of yeah. the enterprise in your network so awesome well, Paul, I just have to say it's been great having you on the show today, just learning more about your background, what you're doing at Def Logics. Um, the uh, Obviously, the boot camp, just amazing, um, really a pillar in the cybersecurity community. Um, I have to ask, so, so what's next? I mean, what's next for you? What's next for the company? We're definitely uh, being a, a m- much more aggressive in, in building uh, our commercial products and services. And uh, some research areas that we're going to that we are uh, branching out into is a blockchain uh, analysis and security and uh, in cloud security and uh, in cloud management. So uh, these are two major areas that we're looking into in 2022 to develop some more products and services Uh, on top of this. The uh, the the course, uh, the the, the boot camp and and the uh, security gap manager. So. Fantastic. So, Paul, if somebody is watching this and they want to learn more or to connect, whether it's about obviously the business side with Def Logics, maybe they have some needs and they want to discuss those with you and your team, or even on the boot camp side. Mm-hmm. So, somebody's watching this and they're thinking about, you know, a career change or furthering their current career um, mm-hmm. in cybersecurity. I mean, what's the best way for people to to follow up and to connect? Uh, you can reach us at uh, at deflogics.com. Uh, def logixcom mm-hmm. And if you want to look into more information about the uh, boot camp, uh, cyberopsacademy.com. Um, those are two ways you can uh, reach out to us and learn more about us. Perfect. And we'll put all that for everybody watching. We'll put all of those in the show notes, all the links, everything else. So you can just click on it and just head right on over and check out the information and uh, everything Paul's talking about. Um, And for the viewers, as always, thank you for tuning in. If this is your first time with us here at Mission Matters, just so you know, we're all about sharing um, the stories of entrepreneurs, executives, experts. We want to know what their mission is. We want to know what gets them up early in the morning, gets them fired up to go out there and to make a difference in the world and to really add value to the marketplace and to, and to, and to give back. So if that's the kind of content you like, don't forget, hit that subscribe button. We have many more mission-based uh, individuals coming on and we don't want you to miss a thing. And Paul, really, it has been a pleasure getting to know more about you and your company. And uh, thank you for coming on the show. All right. Thank you.